Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And here is the long awaited Edwardian ish blouse from a vintage Vogue pattern. First of all, what I'd like to say is thank you so much for 500 subscribers. How exciting. You guys are just amazing. I really, really appreciate it. You may remember some weeks ago, I found a really gorgeous little vintage pattern on Etsy. And I did a kind of little fabric Etsy eBay haul thing. And I decided that I was going to make a blouse out of this beautiful, I think it's 1960s, sheet. When I looked at the pattern, it's a size 12, I needed to adjust it. So the first thing I needed to do was take all my measurements and then measure all the pattern pieces and found the pattern pieces for the kind of the view I wanted to do. So I needed to know things like the shoulder measurement, the bust measurement, the underarm to the hip, so that when I went through the pattern measurements, I could see how much ease Vogue had allowed from what they considered their dress size to the finished garment size. There were no finished garment size um, measurements anywhere, which is why I had to do it all myself. And then I had to work out the amount of ease being allowed across the bust, uh, around the wrist, around the neck, all of those sort of things. And then add that to my measurements and then adjust the pattern accordingly. Here you can see me um, adjusting the sleeve. So I literally just wanted to make the sleeve bigger. So what I did was I split it right down from the centre shoulder and eased it apart. Some people call this a slash and spread method. And that will give you something that's just literally bigger and the same shape. I did later on mess around with the shape a bit because it was quite a slim fitting upper arm. It's almost like a bishop sleeve and I didn't really want that. I wanted something a bit more Edwardian-y, Victorian-y, almost sort of leg of mutton but without the narrow part at the cuff. So this isn't really a video about how to scale up a pattern or make pattern changes but there's some little bits and pieces in there. One of the weird things I noticed about the Vogue pattern was that the notches are to the outside. I don't know what they do on modern patterns, so I tried cutting them all to the outside, the little diamond markings. At various points all the way through the footage, you're gonna see me changing my mind and cutting into the seam allowance. It's just easier <laughs> to do that. And then here I am actually making the front pattern um, part, which is the bit with the pin tucks. Now I knew I needed to allow some extra fabric across the bust um, and also around the neck, but they would that would end up doing the same thing anyway. So I measured the pin tucks, which are a quarter of an inch, edge to edge, and then how far apart they were in distance. They were actually an inch apart. So that was really nice that I could move them around as long as I had the same number of pin tucks. It didn't really matter on their placement and I decided to make a pattern and mock up in one because it's quite a simple pattern. the mock-up this is as far as I've got I've stitched it in red thread so you can see where all the pin tucks go and what I've discovered because I've tried it on I've only put one sleeve in because honestly who's who's gonna set more sleeves than they need to but one of the things I found was this shoulder seam is still too big this is actually on the original size to the pattern that shows you how small my shoulders are. What I need to do is I need to take this up. I need to cut that away by about an inch. It was it was that big. Now I did think initially it might be because I'd taken out the last pin tuck here, but these are only a quarter of an inch. And weirdly, even though I took one out to put pin tucks over here, on the middle. The shoulder seams still fit together, so the back shoulder seam and the front shoulder seam still fit. They were still the same length. I, I actually think it's a fit issue with the shape, the shape of me because my shoulders are so small. Also, I think that will sort out the problem with the sleeve because the sleeve is a little bit tight 
on the upper arm here but then when I was pulling it up it's like the fabric moves around there's more fabric there but also I might put a little bit more fabric I might recut the sleeve pattern again to put like an extra inch of ease here only because I don't I've got quite sturdy upper arms and I don't really like that slim fit that you can see it's quite a slim fitting upper arm for me what I get is I get it it, it fits I mean I could have made this and it would have been fine but and then it's it sort of goes up and then you've got the, the little poof and I want it smoother than that so I need to put more fabric in it that's as far as I've got and I'll just show you you can see that when I was taking it off it pulled the stitches out and that's because what I've done here instead of cutting into the pattern and putting a placket on the front I wanted to do buttons up the back so I've measured all the extra so the pattern actually ends here and then I've put like a little button placket on which will fold underneath there and then the buttonholes will go here and all that sort of thing it just gives me a little indication that perhaps I need to extend that down a bit because you've got everything happening right where the sleeves at the underarm ends you know and then the bust and everything so that shows me that either I need to put a little bit more fabric in there or I just need another button and just have one more there and then that would mean I can get the bows on and off but other than that for scaling up from the pattern it's pretty good I'm pretty impressed with it this sits how it's supposed to it's quite smooth the sleeves are right apart from you know I could do with a little bit extra ease the um, arm side or the armhole part to this actually sits up nice and high because it's been sized up for me so this is a vintage size 12 to a I'm not saying but um it means that the proportion of it is actually right for me because I'm very very high-waisted and quite petite across the top so so I'm going to go and do those last little adjustments and go and try it on again and just make sure that that's right and then we're going to get to the exciting bit of actually cutting out the lovely green fabric and here's the exciting bit of cutting out the green fabric so I've just realized watching this back that I didn't actually do the alterations and try it on again. I just blithely did the alterations and then cut out this blouse. But it's okay, it fits. I have tried it on. I, what I wanted to do with this is I wanted to make sure that the pin tuck lines lined up with the print lines because very, very quickly, if they'd wandered off, that would just charge, oh, would have just looked awful. So I cut out the front, lining it up carefully, and then I cut out the back. And I made quite a lot of changes to how the back works, but you'll see that later. And it was really nice using the twirl itself to as the pattern. You can still see through it and get it in the right place and line it up. But it, it's great if I want to make any changes in the future, I can put darts in it, I can sew through it and all that kind of thing. So I'm really glad I went to that extra effort to do it. And here's me cutting it out and trying to work out whether to cut round diamonds or cut notches. Can I just say, this Vogue pattern, vintage Vogue patterns, this is the only instruction that you get on the Vogue pattern. You'll see it in a minute. It tells you to match up the pin tuck tailors tack things and make pin tucks that's it that's all it tells you so if you've never done any sewing you would be thinking what am I doing with that so to try and make it less kind of here I am cutting out and here I am sewing I'm getting all of the sort of main bits of cutting out done and then putting all the markings on and then I'll take things to the sewing machine and do them um, you know several items at the same time clearly gone over to notches on this bit this is one of the sleeves so there's a like a little cuff bit thing there and then when you've done your tailor's tacks you just gently pull the pattern away and if you put your thumb on it and apply a little bit of pressure they won't come out and actually they were really accurate I measured them um, afterwards so I was really pleased with that and then just pull your pieces of fabric apart and snip through and you've got the markings for the tailor's tacks and then I used a um, water soluble pen which was good and it wasn't because I was really really undecided whether to use the water soluble pen 
or the friction marker because if you use a water soluble pen and then you iron something it will set that which you don't want if you use a friction marker and you iron it it removes all the markings so i went with a water soluble pen and didn't iron anything until i'd done all of that bit and so the pin tucks literally just making sure that the sewing lines match up so you can see me sort of flicking it over and having a quick look and then sewing the pin tucks at the machine just make sure you stop on your pin um your tailor's tack line and um i didn't do a forward and backward because i didn't want it to look lumpy because remember this is going to be on the front of the blouse so you can see the sewing so I left the ends and then I tied them off by hand afterwards I pulled them through to the back and then tied them off into little knots at the back and there's taking out the water and it's uh, it's pretty good I'm pretty pleased with that pin tucks look really nice and they line up properly and then I ironed them and it, I can't believe how just doing the front just makes it look like a blouse. It's, sort of, it's like it's done. No, it wasn't. So the next thing is to pin together the shoulders and the sides and then pin together the sleeves as well. And then I took all of those to the sewing machine and stitched them down. And it was at this point that I realised that this fabric is um, a poly cotton, which I explained in a previous video, I wouldn't usually use, but as part of my kind of upcycling what have you it's so pretty but it frays it really frays a lot so i realized i was going to have to fell the seams now on the shoulders and the sides i've done that on the machine because you can't really see it i could have done it by hand but then this video wouldn't have gone up for another week and you know um, and also where the side seams and the shoulder seams are going to take a, quite a lot more you know, stress and strain I thought it, would, it was fine to just do it on the machine if I did it again I probably would do it by hand I think just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist but once it's had a good press it honestly you really can't tell and then going back to the sleeve this is the where the dart is and it took me uh, about four attempts to read the instructions to work out what they meant and basically um, what you've got to do is dart part of it and then the rest of it you have to turn there's hardly any fabric there to actually turn it they don't leave you much when you cut into it but you have to turn it by hand and it's really annoying because you can't make it neat at the top if it was going to take a lot of wear and tear I might have put a little piece of twill tape on it or something but it was okay And for the arm um, seam, I didn't want to fell that because it would have been quite hard to do and quite finicky. So what I did was I did a double line of um, straight stitch and then trimmed down the um, seam allowance. And then I just overcast it with a zigzag on the machine. And it just makes it you know, a bit more hard wearing and a bit neater on the inside to stop that fraying. And then I've stitched on two lines of um, gathering threads. Um, they need to be stitched onto the top and the bottom and there are some weird markings which again I, I don't know it's possibly it's me scaling up a pattern possibly it's Vogue being what's the word <laughs> inscrutable but anyway I had to gather the top and the top of the sleeve and the cuff and there I'm just testing whether it fits round or not and then easing the cuff out and honestly when I'd done the front and the back and stitched that together stitched the sleeves up and all that I thought oh I'll be nearly done so much faff with cuffs and um, the neckband as well and nowhere in the cutting instructions does it tell you how many pieces you need it's only because I know that you need to have no raw edges on a on a collar and on the cuffs that I knew that I would need two neckbands and four cuffs and all of those items you need to put some interfacing on um, one side of the collar one of the collar pieces and obviously one of each cuff as well just to give it a little bit of stability and again there's no cutting instructions for that either it doesn't say anywhere where you 
cut it out it just says apply your interfacing very careful reading required and look at this lace isn't it gorgeous now this is new broidery, broidery anglais lace and i was so happy that i found it i ordered it online so i took a real risk that it was going to be even close to the green in the blouse it's not identical but it reads as being you know pretty much there like it's meant to be so I decided rather than making my own ruffles I'd use this cute little bit of lace and I worked out that I needed to make it twice the length of either the neckband or the um, cuff and then for some bizarre reason I decided to gather it by hand for the neck um, I don't know why because it's quite stiff cotton and once I started stitching through it I realized I possibly should have washed it first so it will go softer it's probably still got size in it but anyway it was quite hard on the hands and i perhaps should have done it on the machine and then i've just drawn on the seam um, lines so that i can make sure i put the lace inside where the seam allowance is because obviously i don't want to stitch through it it's i want it to pop up and then i just eased it to fit the neck band and tried to get the ruffles equal but after lots of time I, I they're still not quite right but I don't think you can tell and then with as with anything that you're using as a neck ruffle you need to turn a little rolled hem just to hide all those raw edges and that's what it'll look like and I did tack it in place first before I took it to the sewing machine because you've got a sandwich of two bits of neck band a roughly bit of lace that doesn't sit to the edge and some interfacing so give yourself a chance try tacking or basting and then I just stay stitched around the um, neck edge and that's just to stop it um, stretching when you go and pin the um, neck band on because it's cut um, across the bias in places to get the curve of the neckline it will stretch so stay stitching will just literally hold it in place and then this is showing you my little method of turning all the raw edges to the inside and giving it a good press and that way the collar will end up being something you're quite proud of you also have to work on the um, back seam as well the back opening sorry as well because it connects to the collar so all of those bits have to be done at the same time and then what i do is i match up that edge to the stitch line from the front which means that when you whip stitch it down, you're stitching into the seam line just about. And even if you just miss, you're not really gonna notice any of the stitches from the other side. And for some bizarre reason, I decided to do the back opening at the same time and overcast that or whip stitch that down. And I wish I hadn't because later on, I realized that if I'd have left it open, it would have given me a bit of leeway to sort out a problem. So on the cuffs, having realized how hard it was to stitch it by hand, I took the lace to the sewing machine and stitched in two lines of sewing with the gathers instead. And then just the same kind of procedure as for the neck band, the, the cuffs are made in exactly the same way. anything that you've got to turn through with a lot of layers always clip down those seam allowances to minimize the bulk you'll get a much tidier result so there's two cuffs that don't actually match but you know they're not perfect So attaching the cuffs to the sleeves is quite entertaining um, because there is one little bit that you've already turned through to leave like the little, what is it called, the bit that sits underneath with the button on it. You just have to make sure everything lines up precisely and that you start stitching right at the edge of wherever that happens to be. And then just so slowly, I mean this has been sped up but it was slow. And then just like the neckband, 
um, turn the other side of the cuff over and whip stitch it into place with your tiny stitches. Well, I was using a ring light and a magnifying glass on this bit so that I could literally go through only one or two threads at a time um, just because I wanted it to look really nicely finished. But you could top stitch it on the machine. If, you, if you're not confident of your hand sewing, top stitch it on the machine and it'll be absolutely fine. You, know, you could make it into a little design feature. I just didn't think it fit in with what I was going for. And then once the cuffs are done, it's time to move on to the sleeves. You notice I've done everything I can possibly do before doing the sleeves. It's got two lines of gathering stitches again. At least gathered sleeves are slightly easier. You just match up the underarm seams and the shoulder top and hopefully it will come together. And it did actually, they, they didn't take too long to do at all. And again, as with the um, inside the sleeve finishing around the armhole, arm side, I stitched along it twice to hold everything in place, trimmed it down, and then I overcast it with a zigzag on the sewing machine. And then the very last bit, or so I thought, <laughs> is hemming the bottom. And I just did a little rolled hem. I, just again, because I kept all of the machine sewing to where you couldn't really see it, I thought it'd be a shame to run the machine along, although it would have taken me about five minutes less than, and it took quite a lot longer to do it by hand. But it looks beautiful, and I'm really, really proud of it. And I'm hoping that this blouse lasts me, so you know, 20 years or something. And then that's me making buttonholes. Hmm. So just a little update. I've done the buttonholes. Here's one with the button on. Here's the other one. And quite frankly, they are the worst buttonholes I have ever done, which is why I'm not showing them to you. So all I've got to do now is do the back there's the placket and there's the other side and there's no overlap there and I thought I was so clever doing this remember this is a sort of what should we say adjusted pattern so I really wanted to make sure that these just met edge to edge the the neck part at the back and then I was going to put buttons all the way down the back those green buttons the same as on the cuff and then I suddenly realized if I put them on here where the placket is the buttons will all be off centered and that would really annoy me so so I thought of a way of making it right because it's a bit late to adjust this. So I think the best solution is to use hooks and eyes. I haven't got any hooks and eyes. I have to get this finished so it can be edited and up on Sunday. So I need to go and get some hooks and eyes from somewhere. Be right back. <laughs> and here is the finished blouse i have to say from a vintage pattern that didn't fit that didn't have the right instructions for me that had bits missing that i wanted to change it turned out really really good i am so pleased with it it does fit me and unfortunately i don't have any skirts to show you with it at some point in the future i think i'm going to make myself a beautiful navy blue linen pinafore dress to wear over it which i think would be really nice and there's the hooks and eyes at the back and it actually works so well it fits perfectly and i've deliberately not put even deliberately not put anything on the back of the neckband because I have shoulder length hair and it will get caught in everything and it'll also mean it's slightly more comfortable to wear so I hope you enjoyed this uh, prolonged slightly odd upcycling dressmaking vintage bedsheet shenanigans I think the next thing I'm going to be making is some little craft project I'm going to have a little bit of a break from uh, big things and then I'll go back to quilting probably after that do, do some more quiltyage stuff so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it made you laugh and I'll see you again soon bye